Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to the final tutorial in our Movie Searcher app series. In this tutorial, we will be building out a favorites page. And the favorites page will essentially allow the user to view all of the favorited movies that are in the database, as well as delete those movies from the database. Also, the user will be able to search through the movies that are in the database. So if they have like hundreds of movies favorited, they'll be able to find a specific one. Aside from this favorites page, we're also going to do some heavy refactoring for our application. Here's what our application currently looks like. We have our text input. You put in any kind of input and it starts to search out for our movies. It displays 20 movie items. And then if we hit the button to the right, it allows us to view the overview of the movie. And then if we hit the button to the left, it puts a movie into our database. And if we hit that again, it removes the movie from our database. Let's start by refactoring our home page widget into our screens folder. So to do this, I just want to cut this entire thing out. So the home page class as well as the home state class. And then we'll take that and put it into this home.dart file inside of the screens folder. We can also come up to the top here, grab the API key as well as all of the imports. And we want to just copy all of the imports. So after copying the imports, we can then put them inside of our home.dart file. And then we can come back into our main.dart file and delete all of them except for the flutter material.dart import. We also want to make an import to our new file, which is our screens home.dart file. And this will clear up any errors that we had inside of this main.dart file. So the reason we wanted to do this is because we're going to be making another page and it just makes much more sense for our code to have all of the UI elements inside of a single folder. As such, we want to create a favorites.dart file inside of our screens folder as well. And in this file, we want to import flutter material and we'll want to import our model and our database as well. We can now create a simple stateful widget, stateful widget called favorites, and then the state for the stateful widget will be called favorites state. And for now, inside of the build function, we'll just return a empty container. Now, the way that we want to add multiple pages to our application is by using tabs. Tabs are something that we haven't really looked at yet. Instead, we've looked at routes. But tabs allow us to deal with routing and with navigation in a way that's fairly intuitive, especially since in this application we only have two pages. For our home property inside of our material app widget, we want to point this towards a default tab controller widget. And the length of this widget will be two because we have only two pages. And then the child will be a scaffold. Now tabs can be embedded in our app bar and they can also be embedded in other parts of our application. So you can put a tab on the drawer, you can put a tab on the top of our application, and you can put a tab at the bottom of the application. In this case, we're going to put our tab at the top. So to accomplish that, we create a new app bar inside of the scaffold. We'll give it a title, and then we want to fill out a property called bottom. And the bottom is just essentially the bottom part of the app bar. In the bottom, we'll create a tab bar widget, and this tab bar widget will have multiple tabs, specifically two of them. Each tab will have an icon and a piece of text. So the first one will say home page, and we'll have an icon that looks like a house. And then the second one will have the icon's favorite icon, and then text that just says favorite. We can now come down below our app bar and give this scaffold a body of tab bar view which allows us to add the two children that we want to associate with our tabs. So our home page will be associated with the first tab, and then our favorites page will be associated with the second tab. We should also come up to the top of this file and import the favorites page so that it gets rid of the error. So here's what our application looks like now. And you can see there is an issue happening because we have a scaffold inside of our main scaffold. So we probably want to get rid of this scaffold here. We have the two tabs. First tab leads to our home page, and the second tab leads to an empty container. And we can slide back and forth between the two tabs fairly seamlessly. Now there is another issue that will happen as a result of using tabs like this, and that has to do with our database. 
if you look at the debug console here, we have this exception. And that's because when I slid over to the favorites page, the main page closes the database. And then when I try to come back to the home page, it tries to reopen the database, which then throws this exception. So we'll have to come into our main page and restructure how we deal with our database. In here, I'm going to delete the global database variable and then, of course, delete the db close db function inside of our dispose function. And then inside of main, I'm going to delete this whole db equals movie database db.initdb. Also, all the way at the bottom with our item builder, I'm going to just remove the database from here, which means that I also should go into the movie view and remove the database from the constructor. And also, we're going to remove this from our global variable as well and remove it from the init state function in this class too. Now, this will cause an error with our onPressed function. And we can resolve this quite simply. So I'm going to take all of the stuff in the onPressed function and cut it out. And then we're going to create an onPressed function up here. So just void onPressed. And then I paste all of this in. And then at the top here, I want to say movie database db equals movie database. And this will get a reference to our database and then allow us to call these two methods in the database. And now, of course, we need to add our onPressed function to our onPressed property. And we can just do it by putting it inside of our closure here. Now, while we're in our home.dart file, we also want to remove that scaffold like we mentioned before. And we can just delete this part from here all the way down to the body. And then come down here and delete one of the parentheses. And this will then resolve all the issues that we had before where we had the scaffold inside of the other scaffold. You can also see that inside of our home.dart file, we can remove the database import because we're not using it inside of this file anymore. And now everything should be cleaned up and it should run exactly the same as it did before, except now we have a tab at the top. Before we get around to building out our favorites widget, let's go into our database and build out the logic that we need to get our movies out of the database. The first function we want to create will be called get movies and it will return a future with a list of movie inside of it. We'll get a reference to our database and then we'll call db.query on our movies table to get the entire table. We'll put it as a list of map type into our results variable. So we can complete this function by returning result.map and calling this function on each of our movies. So we just call movie from JSON and then we put everything back into a list. Now we will run into an issue here, however. If we look at our from JSON function, the issue will come from the favored value. So in our SQLite database, you can't store a Boolean as a true value or a false value. When you store it as a bit, it stores it as either one or zero. So what will happen if we try to run this method on the information that we got back from our database is that we'll get an integer when we want to have a Boolean. We can fix this, however, by creating a from DB method. We just run a ternary operator on our favored key. And if we get back one, then we want to put true into favored. Otherwise, we want to put false into favored. So now we can come back into our database file and replace the from JSON method with from DB. We want to create another function inside of our database. And this will be a function to get a single movie out. We'll get an instance of our database. And then we can call db query movies table where our ID equals our ID, which is being passed through our get movie function. And then we can check to see if our result length is equal to zero. And if it is, then we return null. Otherwise, we take our result and we run it through our movie from db. Specifically, we run the first index of our result. And the reason why we need to specify the index is because we get back a list of map as our result from our query, even if we're only getting back one single query value. This is all the functionality that we need to set up for our database. 
Let's get into building out our favorites page. Our favorites page will have three global variables. We'll have filtered movies, movie cache, and we also want to have a published subject. So we need to bring in Rx Dart for that. Then inside of our init state function, we can set the two lists of movies to empty lists. And then we can take our subject, turn it into a stream, and then listen on it with this function called search data list. And for now, I'm just going to create the function, but leave it empty. So this is very similar to how we're doing our text box in our home page. And in fact, our favorites page is going to be sort of a hybrid of our home page and our movie view page. So as such, we also have a container with some padding. And then we have a column with children, first child being a text field. And in this text field, we want to have our string. And then we want to call subject.add with the string. And this will push this into our observable, our published subject observable. And we also want to specify our keyboard type as text input type dot URL. Now the reason we want to do this is so that when the user brings up the keyboard, the text they type in will be all lowercase. Now after our text field, we're going to have our list view dot builder. We'll have the padding, which will be edge insets all 10.0. And then the item count for this will be filtered movies dot length. Then our item builder will be a function that takes in the build context and our index. Now again, this is remarkably similar to what we did in our home page. Inside of our item builder, we want to return a new expansion tile. For initially expanded, we'll fill in filtered movies index dot is expanded. And if that's null, we'll put in false by default. And then we'll take the boolean from the on expansion change function and put it into the is expanded field for the particular movie that's being rendered by this expansion tile. Now, one of the big differences between this and our movie view page is that the icon to the left will be a trash can rather than a star. So we'll just say leading is icon button. Icon is the icons delete, and then the unpressed for now will be an empty closure. Then the title will be exactly the same as our movie view. So we'll have a container with height 200. Then we'll have a row with the children inside of it. And the children will be based on a ternary operator where we check to see if we have a poster path or not. If we do, then we want this to be a hero operator with our image in it. And then the tag for the hero operator will be our ID. Otherwise, we'll return an empty container. And then after that, we'll have an expanded with our movie title. We'll align the text in the center and we'll give this max lines of 10. I'm also going to add the dispose function. And in the dispose function, we want to take our subject and make sure to close it. And that will close the observable stream so that we don't have any errors as a result of it being left open. Now here's what our application currently looks like. If we click into our input box, we can type into the home page. And the more we type in, the more specific our movies become. Now our favorites will not be populated yet. And even if we add things to the database, you'll see here, they don't actually show up in our favorites page. So let's actually add that to our application now. We will set up our favorites by using a function called setup list. This will be asynchronous, and inside of it, we'll get a reference for our database, and then we'll get our filtered movies list, and we'll take all of the movies that we get out of our database with our get movies function, and we'll put them inside of that filtered movies list, and then we'll call set state on putting our filtered movies into our movies cache list. And we want to call this setup list function inside of our init state function. If we reload our application, you can see now we have items inside of the favorites list. And these were items that I added in earlier. So if we come in here and we look for more movies and we start starring them, they should now show up inside of our favorites list as well. And you can see here's some of the movies that I just added. But of course, if we click the delete button, we can't delete them yet. So let's rectify that as well. For this, we'll create an on pressed function. This will call set state on filtered movies dot remove, and then we'll pass in filtered movies index to remove it. And the index will be passed into this on pressed function. 
So this will delete our movies from our filtered list based on the index of the tile that we're clicking the button on. Now to completely remove the movie from our database, we need to get a reference for our database and then we can call db delete movie and pass in filtered movies index dot id and we can then add our on pressed function to our on pressed event so now if we come over to our favorites we can click the trash can and you can see here each of the tiles gets removed and it doesn't matter which one we click first they just get removed so now the final piece of logic that we need to add to this favorites page is the ability to search out and find the various favorites movies that we've added to the favorites list. I'm just going to add a bunch of movies first. And now we should have well over 20 movies inside of our favorites list. If we come into our search data list function, this is where we will actually create our quote unquote search engine. So first we want to see if the query that the user is typing in is empty or not. And if it is empty, then we want to set state so that we're taking our movie cache list and we're setting it equal to our filtered movies. That way we're kind of passing the list that we never touch back into our filtered movies, which will repopulate the filtered movies. So when the user deletes whatever they've typed into the input box, it will restore the list to what it used to be. Next we want to call set state and then we want to manipulate our filtered movies list by setting it equal to itself and then manipulating it by filtering through it. So we can iterate through our list with this where function and we can take each of our movies and we can say okay take the movie out and just get the title then convert it to lowercase and trim all the white space out of it and then check to see if it contains this regular expression and our regular expressions start with this r double single quote and then we concatenate that with query to lowercase dot trim so we're taking our query converting it to lowercase and trimming out any white space and we're putting it inside of this regular expression and then we're taking all of the movies that come back as true as matching with this regular expression and we're putting them back into another list and then putting that into our filtered movies list. Then finally, to actually make this effect change on our list, we need to call set state a third time. Now keep in mind that this function is sort of like a loop. Every single time the user types in a character, the function will get called and it will run all the way through. If the user types in the first character, the function gets called, it loops through, then they type in another character, it gets called again, and it goes like that over and over and over again. The only time this function doesn't get called is when the user hits the backspace and removes a character, or when the box is just completely clear. So here we have our large list of movies, and we can start typing in characters. So here I'm looking for any movie that has an F in it, and all of these have F in them. Let's say FI. So here we have FI. If we put in FE, now we have FE, so A Bug's Life and A Few Good Men. And of course, we can now delete these two movies. And you see, if I go backwards, now our list gets fully restored. All right, so there is one more thing that we want to do with our application. Currently, you can see this movie here is in our favorites list. However, it's not showing up as being favorited. So to fix this, we come into our movie state class. And we come down into the init state function and we want to pull from our database. So we create a new reference to our database and then we call db.getMovie. We pass in our movie state.id and then we want to take the movie that gets returned and we want to call set state movie state.favored equals movie.favored. This way we overwrite the current movie state favored with our database backed movie dot favored. So now if we restart our application and I come in here and I search out A, you can see this movie is now favored and so is this one below it and this one because all of them are on our list. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.